All right, in our last video, we just completed step three, which was creating an unadjusted trial balance. And next we have to journalize some adjusting entries. So I am going to clean up our screens a little bit here so that we have um, all of the information that we are going to need. All right, so I have a plethora of videos or uh, windows open at this point. So what we're going to do is journalize these uh, six adjusting entries on our general journal. Um, I'm going to scroll down to our adjusting entries. These will be on page two of our journal. And we are going to journalize each of these A through F. Now, as far as the date goes for these adjusting entries, they will always be on the same date. In this case, it's going to be the end of the month, so it will be on January 31st. Um, and again, just like before, we have the, the accounts and the post ref and the debit and the credit up here. Um, so when we're going through these, actually, let me go ahead and add those titles real quick. All right, now you're going to notice that for some of these six adjusting entries, we are going to have to refer back to the current balances in the account as of the end of the month before the adjusting process. So that's why I have this unadjusted trial balance up here. Now keep in mind that these accounts are the same as they were on our chart of accounts before, uh, so I'm not going to include that on the screen, but every once in a while I might pop in this little um, pregnant LC guide so that we can kind of analyze these adjusting entries since they do follow the same rules as regular journal entries. All right, so the first one says that at the end of January, only $200 of the supplies were remaining. So only $200 of supplies are on hand as of January 31st. However, when we take a look at our supplies account on our unadjusted trial balance, it says that we have a thousand. So that begs the question, what happened to that missing 800? We used them. So 1000 is the balance in the account. They say we have 200 left. So we used up 800 of those supplies. So what we have to do is recognize that our supplies account is decreasing by $800. So, uh, supplies is decreasing. Supplies is an asset. And how do you make an asset decrease? Credit. So we are going to credit the supplies account to decrease it for the amount used. Now keep in mind every journal entry, whether it's a regular one, an adjusting entry, or a closing entry, it needs at least one debit and at least one credit. That way debits can equal credits. So what is our debit going to be in this case? supplies expense. So you may remember in that earlier video when we were journalizing the purchase of these supplies, I said, why are we not using supplies expense? Because we didn't use them yet. Now that we used 800 of them, we're going to expense that 800 that we used. All right, B, again, end of the month. Recorded one month of depreciation, $100. So depreciation is always one of those weird ones. Um, at this point, if you're not too comfortable with depreciation, you're going to want to spend some time, I don't want to use the word memorizing, but uh, kind of getting comfortable with this concept. We are not going to affect the equipment account at all because de depreciation essentially is slowly riding off the accounting mm, value of this equipment. So what we're going to do is we are going to expense the depreciation and then we are going to put it into an account called accumulated depreciation. So we'll never actually affect the equipment account itself. So depreciation expense, it's an expense. So we are going to debit it to make it go up $100. And accumulated depreciation is also going to go up by $100. Now just to kind of analyze that accumulated depreciation a little bit more, um, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. So remember contra, those signs are going to flip. So to make accumulated depreciation increase, we would credit. All right, next. Rent for the month needed to be recorded. Now in order to do C, we need a little bit more information. We do see that we have some prepaid rent of 1500 here, but let's go up to the regular transactions to remind ourselves. Um, on January 4th, we paid $1,500 for three months rent. So since we paid 1500 for three months, that's $500 per month. And essentially, how many months have passed? One month. So what we need to do is remove one month of rent from this prepaid rent item. 
So prepaid rent is an asset. We want to decrease it by the $500 that has expired or been used up. So how do we make prepaid rent decrease? Credit. So let's go ahead and credit prepaid rent for $500. And then that begs the question, what is our debit account going to be? Well, if you look on our unadjusted trial balance, which we're using as our chart of accounts for now, um, you will have some inspiration here, rent expense. We are expensing the value that has been used up. Go, oh, perfect. All right. All right, down to our next one, D. Uh, Jonathan's receptionist had worked three days, six hours a day, and has not been paid yet. So before we deal with the amount, let's think about this. Uh, the receptionist has worked for Jonathan, so he has earned some money, or the receptionist has earned some money, so that for us would be an expense, and we are not paying them yet. So in that case, that would be salaries and wages payable because we owe that receptionist for that amount. So we are going to be using salaries and wages expense to expense the amount, debit to make it go up, and salaries and wages payable, credit that account, liability, make it go up. Now as for the amount, uh, the receptionist worked three days, six hours a day. So three days and six hours each day. So the receptionist worked 18 hours total if we go up to the 20th, that give a, gave us the information about hiring this receptionist, you'll see that the receptionist earns $15 per hour. So 18 hours at $15 per hour, $270. Expense, payable. Good. All right, next, Jonathan had provided $500 worth of services in relation to the advance payment received on 1-9. So here on 1-9, sorry, January 9th, we see that we received an advance payment of $2,000 from a client for services to be provided later in the month. So when we did this entry before, we debited the cash received and credited unearned fees to show that we owed a service. Now that we provided $500 worth of services, we need to remove that $500 from unearned fees. So how do we do that? We debit unearned fees a liability to make it decrease. So we're recognizing we provided $500 of those services. Now as for our credit, if it was previously unearned, now that we provided the service, what is it now? It's earned, so we're going to be using fees earned. Our revenue account, credit to increase. And last but not least, Services provided but not yet billed to the customer totaled $700 at the end of the month. So we provided some services. So again, we earned those fees, fees earned. And did we get paid yet? Nope, we haven't even billed them yet. But we did provide the services, so we have the revenue earned and the customers owe us that money. Accounts receivable, debit. All right, now one thing I do wanna point out before we kind of wrap everything up is notice that these adjusting entries do not have cash in any of them. So you should never, ever, ever have cash in an adjusting entry. So make sure that you understand that whenever cash is involved in a transaction, that's just a regular journal entry. It's going to be that business transaction trigger that gets you to record an entry. These adjusting entries should include other accounts other than cash. Okay. So now that we are done with step four, we're going to be moving on to step five, posting these adjusting entries to the general ledger. So you might notice now that we have a little bit of a rhythm going. We're going to journalize, post, trial balance. Kind of show you up here. So journalize, post, trial balance. Again, journalize, post trial balance. So there is a bit of a rhythm going on here. All right, let's go ahead and move on to posting those adjusting entries to the general ledger. I'll see you in the next video.